Okay, this is not going to work. Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. This is the dresser thus far and I kind of wanted to catch you guys up to base. Uh, if you hadn't seen the rest of the videos on the dresser build, you can click a link on that in the, uh, the cards up top. Um, but last time I had everything up to this rung finished and I had built these shelf dividers um, but had not installed them. So I hadn't put in this uh, top sub top top sub top <laughs> I hadn't built this yet and so this video is about building these two rails and then the five um, dividers that go between them and how it's all put together so let's uh, jump into this and we'll cut it apart and make these pieces this is white oak it is one of my all-time favorite woods and a pleasure for me to work with but uh, I need to cut it to length and uh, start taking it from rough sawn lumber to usable lumber this bow saw is uh, something I purchased a while back and I love using it. It's just kind of a fun tool. Once I, they are cut to length, I need to actually joint one edge so that I have a surface to reference off of and to make future marks. I can use this number seven to come in and uh, make sure I have a perfectly flat, smooth edge all the way across. And that then gives me an edge I can make a mark off to uh, find out where I need to cut next. And that brings me to one of my all-time favorite tools, the Rubo style frame saw. I made this a while ago and it was a pleasure to work with. Uh, really a, a fun tool that I, I love having in my shop. And when it's really set up right and you get it going, uh, it cuts really darn fast. Um, just, just really fun. Once it's been uh, cut, I need to smooth out that edge and make the mark for the next cut. Once all the pieces have been dimensioned, or at least cut to the right length and width, I can then start flattening out one side, making sure that it's perfectly true and twist-free using the winding sticks. Once I have one side perfectly flat, 90 degrees to the edge, then I can come in with a marking gauge, lay out the thickness, and then dimension it down to its final thickness. I actually did a video a while ago on dimensioning pieces this size, so if you want to, you can check that out. After that, the two long pieces, the rails, need to have a groove cut in them end to end. So I set this up on the bench so that I could uh, run my 45 all the way along. And uh, again, this is another really fun tool. Um, I love making grooves in wood. But once these grooves have been made, then uh, we can actually make the notches in the top of the legs of the dresser to have this uh, recess into. I can just put a guide on there for the saw to rest against and that will allow me to cut this uh, well rabbit dado out of the end. With the uh, rough sawn work of the, the saw, I can come in with a chisel and clean it up. And having a really sharp, clean chisel is uh, one of life's pleasures. And I could do this all day long. It's just fun. <laughs> I say that about a lot of things though. Well, once I have the, the grooves cut in, I can actually mark the two rails to the appropriate length, take them over to the bench hook, and uh, cut them to precisely the length they need to be. Now we can start working on all of the styles that go between these two rails, and now I have an exact measurement of what they need to be. I can put the marking all the way around them, and then cut them to the appropriate length. After cutting them, I put a small tenon in the end of each one, and this tenon will then fit into the grooves of the rails. And uh, just like with the shoulders on the legs, I can clean them up with a chisel, and make them look really nice and pretty. Now I want to test them in the groove and make sure they fit, and this one needed a little bit more work. You can see it was kind of working on one side but not on the other. So I can take it back over to the bench and uh, pare out what I need to remove and make it fit just like butter. After a little bit of wiggling and finessing, then you can uh, fit them into the, the groove and you get this perfect fit that you're looking for. Now it's time for glue up. I put blue tape in the top of the legs so that I can glue this up in place, but it won't actually adhere to the surface. Uh, and that way I can, I can square it up to exactly what the dresser is and uh, work from there. Laying it down into place and making sure everything fits out right 
I can then bring in a few clamps and uh, make it work. I love these clamps. A true pleasure to work with. And yeah, I have a video on those clamps if you're interested. And then my favorite, smoothing. I love smoothing curls. This is just, this is fun. <laughs> I love those curls. Um, but I can smooth out the surface and bring it to the proper dimension so that it is uh, ready for gluing. And then the, the final glue up. This was probably one of the glue ups that I thought was going to be very stressful, but in the end worked out fairly well. The uh, vertical drawer dividers are into grooves in the shelf below and are going to be pinned into this uh, top shelf that we're making right now. Bring in all of my favorite clamps and uh, apply a little bit of pressure. Now once it is fairly well set, I'm going to come in and start putting in the pins that will actually hold this in place. And I just uh, bore them out and uh, uh, put the pins in those holes. While I was here, I figured I'd go ahead and run the pins in the tenons as well, because I didn't get those before. I just put uh, glue in the hole, um, drive in the dowel with a little bit of tapping, and uh, then cut it off to the appropriate length and move on to the next one. I like to leave them about an eighth inch out if I'm going to be shaping them. The ones on the top get cut flush. But uh, I figured this was a good chance to bring the kids in and let them have a little bit of fun. I really need to teach these guys how to swing a mallet. <laughs> I, I love working with the kids in the shop. It is a lot of fun. And uh, I am very pleased with how this has come out. Uh, it's not exactly how I originally intended as things change along the way. Uh, bringing this out to be flush with the front rather than inset as these were uh, was a, a different change. But I'm going to be putting the main top on it and so that shouldn't be as much of an issue. The uh, carcass itself is basically completely done. I just have to do some finishing touches. The tenons need to be uh, cleaned up and shaped. And then I'll be doing some final smoothing and finishing on it um, just before actually putting the finish on it. So some of that stuff I'm waiting on until a little later. But uh, yeah, that's the, uh, the dresser. So I need to make all the drawers and then make the top. Sounds easy, but um, it's not. <laughs> so we'll be hitting those in uh, future, uh, uh, future episodes of this build, and I am looking forward to it, uh, but probably not as much as my wife. <laughs> I hope you like this video. It was a fun one for me. Um, I am going to be putting in the description below some of the tools that I'm using, and so if you have some question about that. Also, if you have any question about what I'm doing, uh, please let me know in the comments. I'd love to answer your questions and help you out there. If you did like the video, please hit like and think about subscribing. I want to say a huge thank you to the patrons on Patreon. You guys are phenomenal and a great encouragement to me. If you want to find out more about that, you can click on the link over here. Also, uh, if you did like this video, you may like one of these others. And until next time, have a wonderful day.